All right, let's get started. We'll be talking with Robbie Black, former CEO of Festival Manager. You can ask questions on Twitter using our hashtag RFID913. You can also ask questions in the chat box located in your panel. But please, join the conversation. So now let's kick it over to Robbie Black. Hello, everyone. Um, we're going to kind of walk through our conversation here and then kind of talking about what our vision is at Vendini in terms of bringing together Festival Solutions. Uh, as uh, Melissa mentioned previously, I was previously um, focused strictly on as Dataflow Enterprises uh, selling back office logistics solutions. Uh, learned a lot in the process of the festival industry over many years. Um, you know, had some really great successes and, you know, had some other things that, you know, we did um, that we learned. But with the emergence of RFID technology and um, kind of the new versions of social media and obviously with smartphones, all those other types of technologies coming out together, um, what we started really realizing about a year ago was that there needs to be this kind of uh, bringing together all these different technologies into, kind of an, into a core system. So today I'm going to kind of talk about our vision and um, what, you know, with Dataflow becoming part of Vendini and then us basically expanding that entire ecosystem of the festival um, between ticketing, marketing, access control, logistics, uh, bringing all this stuff together into, into a system that will be kind of built for the future for festivals um, from small to large scale. So as I go through this, like I said, like Melissa mentioned, we have some social media channels if you guys want to ask questions. Uh, and obviously at the, end of the, at the end of the presentation, I will... Um, Kind of summarize everything and then i'll provide some information on how you guys can contact us directly if you guys want to talk about things uh, more extensively on a one-on-one -on -one basis all right so what we're basically trying to uh what, what we are currently developing and within our company is this ecosystem of basically bringing together event logistics the ticketing um, in some cases, uh, depending on your size of your festival, actually managing your website and content, things like that, because a lot of that stuff interplays with the system in terms of like event registration, wristband registration, social media integration. Uh, obviously, some of your logistics may get shared out, including things like collecting volunteer applications, press and media. So there's a whole bunch of things from the front of the house, the back of the house perspective that need to be all kind of brought back together into one system. So that's what we're trying to do here. Obviously, um, Vendini has a long history of working in the um, performing arts space as well. So fundraising is something that it does very well and has to for a long time. So with some festivals, that is a very relevant service. With others, we're really more commercially based. It's not necessarily as much of an impact. Obviously, marketing is big for all festivals. Uh, we'll talk later about how RFID can be a very effective way to get uh, much more detailed information about your, your customers, your patrons. Um, so we can get a, uh, get a very um, good set of information because with most festivals, you only see about half of the people that are buying. Do you actually know who they are? Obviously, because if they're buying more than one ticket per order, we're only getting half of the customer information. So be able to bring this whole ecosystem together obviously has a really great impact on marketing and the ability to, to reach every one of your patrons as opposed to half of them on a regular basis with more direct uh, lines of communication like email marketing, things like that. Obviously, in the patron management, that really ties into things like customer service, um, upselling, different things like that. So we kind of bring all the stuff into one system. And obviously, with most festivals, uh, there is a large portion of people that get in through a back office process. Um, sometimes, from, even for major festivals, it can be as much as 20% of the people on site can be coming through you know, a guest list of some form, whether it be industry guests, an artist, musician guest, um, what, you know, what, how that guest list gets handled. So kind of bring us all this together. And Vendini's overall vision with the festival market is to build technology that, it, that is in real time communicates on, on all these levels simultaneously so that uh, we can deliver this thing as one solution as opposed to having bringing in three or four different uh, vendors to complete this task. So our agenda for the kind of the, for today on this webinar, we're gonna kind of walk through several pieces. I'm gonna kind of talk about each one of these areas. Um, not too much in depth. We want to kind of cover each one in, in kind of a uh, just kind of an overview perspective, uh, but ultimately kind of dovetailing all this together to talk about how this ultimately really plays into the RFID technology and kind of where this needs to go going forward for the future. So obviously we have back of the house management, um, which really uh, kind of handles different aspects of production and guest list and things like that. Also streamlining festival logistics, uh, creating better processes for, you know, putting a request such as such as guest lists and things like that, but they have to go through some kind of approval process. Obviously, we need to continue to improve on that process, as well as other things like tables and chairs and tents, um, putting in the ability to track timelines, 
um, different types, you know, really kind of bring project management to a festival on top of just managing, you know, human, uh, human resource related activities. Uh, access control in depth, obviously with the introduction of RFID, uh, access control has um, been revolutionized quite a bit. Uh, you're now, you know, there's, there's some complications with RFID bring to this equation. Uh, if most of you guys ever work in, I've worked in the festival industry, you're familiar with like, credentialing and things like passports. Um, there's other things that have considerations that need to be kind of addressed, like how do you wristband, say, volunteers or regular staff into certain types of credentials that need to access areas like, say, a VIP compound while they're scheduled to work there. But then when they're not scheduled to work there, you don't want them in that area. Right now in the industry, we have to do a lot of a lot of exceptions. We have to double wristband people, or we have to just kind of give them VIP wristbands and hope they're not in there when they shouldn't be. So there's different kinds of um, considerations with access control. RFID is a great technology for overcoming this, um, but we have a lot of work left to do as an industry to uh, get to that kind of level of fine grained control. But uh, we're definitely focusing on it at Vendini right now. Uh, obviously, implementing RFID, I'll talk a little bit about the considerations of the infrastructure that you have to consider, the impacts on different areas of your uh, planning, as well as other types of infrastructural things you'll have to do to make that work. Social media and registration services, technically those are kind of two separate things. Registration is, you know, the kind of the, the ability for us to provide them to take their wristband when they receive it from fulfillment, go onto, you know, the website for the festival and plug in their wristband and link that to their to a personal profile. Um, obviously, those things need to get uh, well, well developed and implemented correctly. Uh, before you really can do cash was successful in some ways. Um, but we can talk more about that as we go through the presentation. And then obviously I finish up with cash list and then we'll summarize the, uh, this, the presentations. So I'm going to start off initially with um, streamlining festival logistics. So I make sure. I'm oh, sorry. Saw a chat there. I'll make sure I didn't, uh, wasn't missing somebody's question. Streamlining festival logistics. So these are kind of, uh, you know, for the years of working festivals that, that Dataflow is involved with, as well as um, some of the things that Medini's done as well, this is kind of a top-line list of big areas that have to be managed with most festivals. It's pretty common in a lot of cases. Some festivals have much larger volunteer programs. Um, some people don't. You know, there's a, some festivals we worked with that don't do sponsorship at all. So, obviously, a lot of these are kind of plug-and-play, but just about everyone has at least 90% of this list to deal with. Um, artist relations, pretty straightforward, uh, mainly that focuses around advancing uh, scheduling and kind of, act, you know, getting them the credentials and the guest list and things like that. Production operations, production side operations, that's very focused on logistics such as um, fencing, um, security needs, uh, different types of logistics like golf carts, hotels, all those types of different travel logistics I have to go into that. Guest list management, probably in my experience has been one of the hardest things to manage with festivals. Um, it, you know, obviously these things are very fluid. There's a lot of people being added last minute. It's kind of hard to, you know, someone's getting, you're getting a text message and then you have to go put it in some system. And then, you know, email is a really bad process for managing this, this process because if, you know, if you're texting your assistant, say, go make sure that this person puts somebody on the guest list. Well, the credentialing directors are sitting there on their area and they're really busy trying to process things as, as well as they can because there's some amount of troubleshooting that always has to happen. Uh, to be able to have an efficient guest list system where you can put it in and somebody can review it and approve it and that system, that data flows through automatically to the issuance uh, process where if someone just looks up a name and it's in there, what they need to get has been allocated and approved and they can just issue the passes out. So creating that, creating that experience is important because obviously with a guest list, we're also dealing with fairly important people or people that you know, are tasked with, with writing up articles about the festival, you know, all these different things that happen. But the, the guest lists are extremely important and have to be handled efficiently and properly. And as was much, with much, um, with the best service that we can provide in that situation. It's, it's true of all areas of the festival, but guest lists tend to be more complicated to deal with. Obviously, sponsorship is very important. Uh, typically, we've seen with sponsorship, it's pretty, it's in our system, it tends to be fairly simple. It's more Basic logistics, credentialing, deliverables, both on the festival side and the sponsorship side, but those are, all those areas are very important. Uh, you know, obviously, food and craft vending, as well as any kind of concessions that festival owns, are very important. Uh, volunteerism, uh, volunteer programs uh, have been growing a lot. Some festivals are almost entirely founded on volunteer programs, so creating a really great volunteer system to be able to manage both to take to get those applications to work with people over time historically if you have volunteers that come back year after year kind of keep some kind of history and the skill set different things that they do that's very important uh, credentialing which 
tends to be a lot more complicated. A lot of people who are not from the industry think, you know, they tend to just not understand ticketing. They don't understand the challenges that a festival runs into sometimes when they're all of a sudden you've got somebody like, um, you know, like a Bonnaroo who has, you know, a GA, a GA pass and a VIP pass that can be bought by the public. But then on the backside, they've got 35, 40 different types of credentials they got to deal with. There's a very complex access control plan that goes into the back world of these large festivals like Coachella, Bonnaroo, Outside Lands, and even down to smaller ones. I mean, you get down to small festivals that aren't, aren't on that, you know, that top tier list. Uh, they still can have a fairly complicated credentialing plans. So have an efficient system to uh, issue that, approve it, review it, change it, and then ultimately deliver it uh, is very important. And then catering. This is um, one area of festivals that a lot of people don't, so some people don't, uh, you know, typically associate uh, this being something so complicated, but it can be very complicated. Um, and obviously, with a lot of festivals, especially ones that tend to do more camping-related activities, uh, or they're on site longer, depending on their situation, they tend to have much larger catering budgets because of their needs to have to feed people. So managing having fine grain controlled uh, and a solid system for keeping people out of that area, unless they're supposed to be in there, or let, don't allow people to go in and pull out three or four meals when they're only allowed to have one. Those things add up very rapidly. Uh, so you want to make sure you have a good system for managing and advancing that. So this is just kind of a little basic graphic. It's just kind of showing, you know, basically some different important areas of a festival. Uh, you know, in the past before things like Dataflow and, and there's a couple other co companies out in, 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 in the world that do these do kind of what Dataflow did or in, in some ways the Mercado's one. And there's a couple others, but they, you know, obviously these are kind of the areas that we have to focus on. Um, you know, and this is just kind of representing these are in the past, these were all kind of managed in our own little silo, and it was very difficult for event producers or, or the or the top promoters or the, or the managers of, an, of a major event. It was kind of hard getting everything consolidated. So the goal with creating a back of the house solution is how do I get a list of every golf cart across the entire festival from every different major area? You know, what kind of you know managing hotel and lodging is very complicated. Obviously, guest list was another complicated problem. So. Using things like Google Drive, which can be a can be a good solution for some of this. The downside of those types of technologies, they they tend to not provide much control. You know, basically you can share the document or you can allow someone to edit on it. But kind of having things like really drilled down and really controlling things down, say even to like a request level, uh, very difficult in those technologies. So obviously our our focus when we build these types of solutions is to uh, focus on all these areas, but bring them all together into uh, something that's real concise. So I'm going to kind of go through each one of these areas real fast. We'll spend a ton of time on these. Most of you are, are familiar with these types of lists, but when we're dealing with, with basically festival logistics, you know, obviously, and these things are important when we get a little bit further into the RFID conversation, but, uh, you know, artist relations, obviously managed credential packets, and they tend to be issued in packet format for artists, obviously, for, for a lot of cases. Um, artist transportation is a very common logistic that we manage in our process. Um, obviously, it's very complicated, and that's a very fluid uh, process things tend to change people's slots are delayed you know whatever there's all kinds of different problems that come up with that uh, hospitality another one uh, that this would be considered both kind of managing technical riders and things that are supposed to be uh, delivered based on what the artist has negotiated in their contract as well as things like um, top you know obviously transportation needs as well as, as hospitality in terms of lodging uh, things of that nature that they need to be handled uh, scheduling very important um, obviously we're Currently, in our current solution, we've got the system called Sightline, which is our kind of our content management system front end, which allows you to basically host your website. And then if you're managing all your scheduling of your artists inside the festival manager system, uh, we are developing processes where that information can be published automatically to the website. So as you're as you're scheduling and, and plugging people into slots for your for your festival at, at a certain point, that can trigger that information showing up automatically on your website so that you no longer have to kind of manually transfer that information back and forth. And it'll all be done in real time. Uh, we do a lot of more systems recently where we're doing offers, so offers management. A uh, big challenge you saw with, with artist relations and festivals in the past was they were having trouble, and they, especially ones that have a lot of talent buyers, say six or eight. Um, there was some confusion. I mean, they had a hard time like looking at, well, we brought this act back three or four times over the last six or seven years, Get, you know, kind of bringing all that back together financially. Like, what have we paid them? What kind of deals have we done in the past? A lot of times people have had a hard time. It takes a lot of time to bring that information back together and keep it historically. So. We've got a really nice offer solution, which allows you to basically uh, submit an offer to a, to a particular agent, and you can even keep the offer history. So as things change or as you negotiate and go back and forth on that offer a couple of times, we can track what changes were made and display those into a report. 
And then obviously catering, every artist has catering. Uh, we typically see this done in a very simple ticket format, but we have a great solution for managing catering as well as delivering uh, access control for that area. This is just a simple screen from our current solution, a festival manager just kind of shows you kind of visually uh, what we just kind of went through uh, as how things would be advanced normally in our system. And obviously everything about our system can be changed. So th this is a, this is one layout. Um, you could, we could remove some tabs, add tabs, change the fields, um, manage what options are presented when you click on say the green room assignment. Uh, there's all kinds of different things you can do here. Obviously and we also support attaching files directly into the uh, into the views. So that allows you to uh, kind of consolidate your data and your um, your uh, document storage in the one area. Production side operations, um, obviously, is a lot of this is kind of very similar to what we just talked through, uh, although the only side is more staffing related, credential in the parking management, and you have all your normal logistics like golf carts, radios, catering. We tend to track catering on the production side at a person level. So instead of it being this uh, this artist needs you know ten breakfast, lunch, and dinner tickets for say Friday. In this case, we tend to advance meals directly against Robbie Black. So I have I have very uh, specific meal plan that's built for me based on when I arrive on site, when I depart, um, and it allows you to kind of go through and, and control it. So when I go to catering and interact with say our access control system, I just present my RFID wristband, or if I'm not doing RFID festival, I'm just using a barcode. I use the same laminate for the whole time. I don't have to have a ticket every day. So it kind of reduces the amount of tickets that be handed out. It, it creates less problems uh, in terms of people keeping track of tickets, which can be problematic in that way. And obviously all your other normal things, hotel slash housing, depending on your setup for lodging and then radios. And there's a whole ton of other things that can go into this type of uh, management. Here's a basic uh, example of kind of a fake company, but you can see car rentals, staff transportation, all these basic logistics. And we can expand quite a bit on this as I've seen some festivals that have a pretty long list of different things that can be requested based on this particular staff person. Guest list management. Um, when I got into this whole process of building a system for festivals, the two big things I was tasked with trying to solve was how do we solve credentialing, issuance, and guest lists in particular uh, especially on the artist side, they tend to get sent in really late. They change a lot. Uh, a lot of times they're incomplete. It just depends on the situation, the artist. And a lot of times they'll, they'll roll in to check in. They're handing us a list right there on the spot. And their guests have been trying to come in that day before they got there. So this can be really complicated. So obviously the biggest thing to do is have a strong review and approval process, but it has to be easy. Um, there's been a movement in the festival industry in the last few years to start doing more charging. So some festivals are charging donation fees. Uh, some festivals I've worked with have, you know, started, started, you know, you might have an artist that you're negotiating with who says, well, I'm going to, I need this many artists, you know, laminates. I need this much for my staff, whatever. And then we want to have this many people and based on their contract. Well, they, a lot of times they'll, they'll come in and they'll say, well, we need two more for say a record label, or we want to bring our agent. And some festivals, instead of caving on that, because that's typically what's happened in the past, uh, we just end up giving them more and more passes. Uh, they've gone. They've made, made, there's been a movement both both on the industry side and maybe e even with some artist management stuff to say, well, okay, fine, we'll give you four extra four extra artist wristbands, but you're going to, have to pay some fee for them. Um, a lot of festivals that I work with in this level that have done this have started moving in this direction. Some have done it to where they're, they're pegging this to the GF VIP prices. Some just simply charge a donation fee. So there's some foundation, or it goes back to some kind of uh, community. Um, project they've set up to work with uh, obviously some of these sites are in some rural towns so you might work with the local school board and say well we're going to raise some donations every year and we're going to donate it to the school system in that particular area and it helps build relationships with the community and, and a lot of you guys have probably been doing this for a long time understand that uh, it's, it's probably something you already do in some level but um, back of the house charging has become more and more popular and a lot of this has gone to raise basically not you know basically charity revenue for, to kind of uh, kind of fulfill those types of activities um, one of the things that we did is, you know, we want to eliminate as much as possible manual tasks. So as you're going through the review process, we have, we can set the system up to automatically deliver, you know, you've been approved. Here's what you're receiving. Here's the instructions to check in. Because typically, you know, obviously guests in back of the house, check-in locations like guest services and things like that typically aren't advertised. So we have to give them some form of communication on how to get there and directions to that particular location. Uh, Real-time processing, which is really nice. So if you're approving something in the logistics system, typically 
the way we set up our systems is we'll have a separate piece of software actually operating at the credentialing locations that is synchronizing data. So, you know, obviously there's certain infrastructure problems that happen, like you lose the internet or there's some kind of other problem where, you know, we can't, we want to continue issuing passes, but we do not want, you know, if we lose internet for say 15 minutes or we've got some problem with the generator and a gas, whatever the problem is, I've seen all these things happen. Um, you want to be able to continue doing your job as much as possible. There may be things that just got done in, in the system that you don't get right away. But at least, you know, that's that's going to be, you know, a 90-10 rule where, you know, you're getting everyone's pretty much in there and there's, this might be this random problem. So, so wait till things get fixed. Obviously, then the types of guest lists that we're talking about, artist guests, festival guests, slash industry guests, um, press and media, uh, and then officials and locals. And depending on your festival, um, that happens a lot, too. This is just a real basic guest list form. It's pretty simple. I've seen some expand on quite a bit that, to collect a lot more information, but pretty simple stuff here. And obviously this, you can see here on the view, there's an approval button. So, and we typically, we see people approving these things from a report, do not from this view, but, but anyway, these guest lists can be set up pretty simple. Um, and we tend to break them out into separate lists. Like there'll be a separate area for, you know, press and media. And that's based on the fact that whoever's your PR company is handling that list. You don't want them managing or even be able to really to be able to view your, your industry guest list, your artist guest list. So we had the flexibility to do it either way. Sponsors, I'm going to run through this pretty quick. So a lot of this is kind of um, the same information that we were talking about already. So managing deliverables, um, pretty that's kind of a very sponsor-specific thing, but uh, credentials and comp tick management. So one of the things that we're working on is, like, and this will play in well with vending as well as sponsors and things like that. If you've got a contract with a sponsor and, you're going to, you know, give them a credential, which also give them, say, 100, you know, GA comps uh, to be able to approve that in the back of the house system, but then have that automatically injected as an order into the ticketing platform and have the ticketing platform deliver those 100 tickets, well, either through the normal fulfillment process or if you're an RFID based festival, maybe your fulfillment company will basically package that order and ship those out because typically you want things like comp stuff going to sponsors before check-in because they obviously want to deliver these things to their customers or very important people within their particular situation. So we want to get those out earlier. So kind of having that really streamlined process so that, you know, whoever is managing sponsorships is, is putting the stuff in. And then your director of that area is kind of looking back through the contract, looking at what's been submitted. It's so, okay. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to give them. And you approve it. And then that, that whole process gets automated. And the goal here is to try to get this stuff to a point where there's a review process that gets approved and it goes into some kind of process that's already set up. Instead of having three or four different separate processes, ultimately doing kind of the same thing. Activity logs, just kind of basic ability to kind of track uh, communications, different, different uh, things that happen within a sponsor. And then most sponsors don't get a ton of things. Um, might be providing hotel rooms, typically not. Uh, but we do tend to see where we're providing them additional uh, materials such as tables and chairs and tents. Maybe some, there might be some electrical and internet considerations. So those things all play in with sponsors. Obviously, this is a real basic sponsor form, but kind of contact info, sponsor activity log. Maybe some, we can track contract details in there, typically, if you want. Uh, depends on the festival and the privacy side. They may not want to have this information in this area, so it's kind of up to you guys whether or not you would want that. And all the other basic pieces that go into managing a sponsor. And obviously, again, this can be added. This can be expanded if you uh, need it to be. So volunteers, this is an area we're spending a lot of time right now uh, focusing this um Volunteers programs are becoming more and more important, and they have been important for a lot of festivals for a long time. But what we're seeing this play more and more into the the uh, you know recent areas is, is you know doing a better job of scheduling. Scheduling can become very important with RFID. Obviously, you got this technology, and there's a lot of quality qualitative things that we can do um, in the backside, like having better access control, having things like if you're scheduling someone to work from say noon to six in the VIP area, and they're wearing a volunteer wristband, that volunteer wristband normally wouldn't be able to walk through that gate and scan through. But maybe maybe we set up a rule in the system and say 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after their scheduled shift, that gate will accept them. Obviously, the goal here is to get the guards, the security teams, to trust the scanners and not quit focusing on the passports so much. This is a good example of one of the big problems that's been coming up more and more with in my recent experience working with RFID and consulting with festivals has been the fact that the passports are no longer quite working because there's cases where I'm wearing this wristband, but I've got, you know, my wristband's also got a, a special tag on it that, that when I scan a certain gate, it tells me I can't enter. But then on the passport, it shows that pass can come through. So the guards are very confused by that. 
Uh, so there has to be some improvement in how these different back of the house logistics areas and this data gets integrated. And we have to kind of start moving in that direction where uh, they really have these nice, simple, easy to use scanners, but they tell them, yeah, this person, uh, their wristband visually on the board says no, but they have an exception and here's why. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more when I get into kind of the part of that. But scheduling has to become a very important factor because you can't do any of this uh, with RFID until you start getting that data into a central place. And right now, most volunteer programs are managed in other applications. They're managed manually. Uh, you're hiring some third-party group to do it for you and having that ability. So there has to be some some ability to have that information kind of shared in real time with, with the central system so that these types of things can be done. And this is an important consideration. A lot of festivals that I've talked to, especially on a consulting basis, I'd say eight out of 10 that I'm talking to on this level uh, want something along these lines. But it's uh, something we're not able to do just yet. And, and all the current solutions are out there now. Um, but Vendini will be one of the first ones that really considers this a major priority within our development of our system and then having it integrate with our ticketing and ultimately integrating with our RFID uh, products. Um, applications and approvals. Obviously, we want to get, you know, we don't want to have to manually collect these applications. So we, we'd have, and we have for, for the last two or three years supported what we call public forum, which allowed to very easily collect this data, have it go into the system. And basically, your, your volunteer coordinator or coordinators is looking at that list of applications, or reviewing the questions, and they'll approve them. Once they're approved, it'll automatically add them to the approved volunteer list, assign them a credential, assign them parking if necessary based on some of the inputs that they put in the application and the part of the approval process, but just pretty much adds them to the system. And then at that point you can start, uh, start the scheduling process. Uh, and then obviously you can automate a lot of the communications. Um, so for example, if I'm get scheduled for my four shifts, then there's ability to kind of, okay, this person's been completely scheduled and it automatically can trigger sending them a document saying, here's, here's your check-in information. Here's the documents that you need to provide when you show up on site, you need to sign this waiver and then here's your schedule. And here's what we expect of you. And obviously, a lot of volunteer programs, we're seeing more and more cases where, where you know, people have to pay a deposit. So also on the back end, when they've completed their shifts, we're going to be focusing on technology that allows you to go aptly, easily go back through there and review. Did these people work their four shifts? Did they meet the obligations you know, to return their deposit? Things of that nature. And then having that all kind of processed in one thing. And, and just kind of touching on the money side of that, the financial side of the goal here ultimately is to get all this money into one place. I mean, with a lot of these programs, you've got funds going over here for volunteer programs. You've got other funds going over here for, you know, for these other back of the house processes, like say, you know, vendor utility fees and other types of things. So kind of consolidating the money into one area where you can easily report these financials, uh, do your audit reports and things like that, where it's nice and clean. Obviously, that, that's another major goal, you know, down the road that we want to get all these. All, one of the reasons we get all these systems in one place is to be able to provide that level of um, reporting to the financial side of the teams on the festival side to make that easier. Then we have, you know, basic logistics, location, time, amount per station. Um, so basically just being able to kind of manage all the logistics of, of volunteer programs and how that works. Simple volunteer form, and then this is kind of showing a view of their assigned shifts, date and time, things like that. So this is kind of a simple graphic kind of representing where we want to get to. So you got this, you got this central system in the center called Vendini, and then it's going to basically uh, harmonize and synchronize all these different areas into one system, including ticketing. And of course, all this right now is representing back of the house level operations, but on the, within the center core here, that would also extend to have your ticketing and fulfillment and your RFID all tied into one system uh, to kind of deliver this thing. And, and obviously the goal with this is if you get all these things working in a really clean, easy uh, fashion, that both that is very usable by the by the members of the festivals. Um, it's quick and easy to do these types of these different types of activities and then make make all this, uh, you know, the money to be able to go into one place and have everything kind of reported in clean, uh, concise fashion. And obviously, it gives us the ability to deliver this technology at lower cost. Right now, if you're outsourcing all these different pieces to different entities, and I'm not talking about so much about the human side of this, but if you're hiring, you got your you got your RFID company as one as an independent company, you're taking someone else, you're back at the house with someone else, and you know there's two or three other players, maybe you have your volunteer programs, and you have a third or fourth platform. Obviously, you're paying a higher cost to to bring all those things together. 
because every one of those entities is focused on making their money around one activity and supposed to be able to consolidate everything and then make it, you know, kind of bring, um, bring in a, both a scalable solution and something that is um, lower for us to deliver and cost so we can bring that savings to our, to our clients.